Peace, 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 peace to the gods, peace to the earth. How y'all feeling? Peace, love, light, and healing. Climb on in the building. Climb on in. Blessings, y'all. Blessings, blessings. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? Y'all climb on in. If you can hear me and if you can see me, let me know. Type in some nines. I got my Palo Santo going, clearing the good energies. Make sure it's good vibes in the building. I got I got a surprise for y'all too. But y'all climb on in. I want to talk about something. I've been seeing a lot of people hitting us up, talking about autoimmune disease. So uh, I done did a few lectures and a few videos on autoimmune diseases, but you know, it ain't nothing to go over them and go over them a little bit deeper than what I usually go over them. So y'all climb on in. We're going to talk about autoimmune disease. And then, of course, at the end of the video, uh, y'all can call in on video and I can chop it up with y'all and answer whatever y'all need to talk about. So y'all climb on in. All right. I see we got 2000 people in the building. Uh, once a few more people get in, we're going to we're going to talk about it. We're going to burn. We're going to burn through it. Yes, y'all, I'm burning Palo Santo. I know my last one, you know, I'll be speaking fast sometimes. I said I was burning uh, Per Di Arco. Per Di Arco is actually a herb that we use for uh, sexy transmitted diseases. But, you know, sometimes you get to speaking fast. You get to misplacing words and putting words where they shouldn't go. And that was one of those uh, instances. It's actually uh, Palo Santo. Peace, peace, gods and goddesses. Peace, herbs. Blessings, blessings. Yeah, anybody need to check on their package, just hit me up in my inbox. Give me your order number. I'm pretty good with getting back to you on that. Just get your ship right out. Or you can hit us up at orders at yakiawaken.com. All right. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. If y'all ready, if y'all ready, y'all go ahead and type in some nines and we'll get it started. So we're going to straight, we're going to talk about autoimmune disease. We'll break down the meanings, the words, what the root cause of these things is and how to get rid of them, how to reverse it. Simply reversing the stuff is a simple key. And that's the reason why I put that up here in the title, because it's actually easy to reverse it if you understand, understand and understand what autoimmune diseases is. So when you look at the word autoimmune, whenever you get into, you know, holistic health, you get into the allopathic community, you just get into medicine, period. A lot of these words are backed up by Latin and Greek origin. So when you look at the word auto in Greek, it actually means self. And then when you look at the word immune in Greek, it actually means exempt. So autoimmune means self-exempt. And it's basically when the body, this is what they say it is, because if you understand my terminology and how I was taught in the way. I learned to how I evolved in this healing space. I don't believe in an immune system. And I'm going to break down why I don't believe in an immune system before we start talking about these things. But I do want to break down what autoimmune is. So auto means self, just like autophagy or autophagy. It means self. You know what I'm saying? Auto means self. Phagy means eating or consuming. So autophagy or autophagy means self-eating cell. Same thing when you get to autoimmune. Auto means self. Immune means exempt. That means self-exempt. That means the cells is doing something inside the body to make it exempt from any type of disease or any type of blockage of energy or flow of blood. So that's all autoimmune mean. So whenever they say autoimmune, they're telling you that the immune systems or the cells that make up the immune system is attacking its own self, which ha which we see when you study these things under a microscope, which we do all the time. And I can show you all this stuff live. You would never, ever actually see the cell attacking a, a, a auto a immune cell attacking itself. It's always attacking, attacking something else that's sitting on top of a cell. The body is very, very intelligent. The body is very, very smart and the body wouldn't really eat itself unless it need to recycle certain tissues, uh, break down something like, so for instance, I'm gonna give y'all an example. You have something called autophagy or autophagy. And this is when the cells will self consume itself and go through a, something called lysosome where it use a digestive enzyme to break down the cells. So for instance, say if the cell is full of protein. The, the enzyme called lysosome within inside the cell will break down the proteins into simple amino acids. That way, these simple amino acids can be recycled and be reused to grow other cells, whether it's muscle cells, nose cells, muscle fibers, whether it's uh, myelin sheaths that go to a nervous system. The cell will break down a cell that's not being used no more, and it'll recycle those parts and help it, and it'll go back into the bloodstream and be dis be disputed to other, be distributed to other different cells to help rebuild those cells. So that's autophagy or what you'll call autophagy. 
You see what I'm saying? That's the only time you really see a cell eat itself or consume itself. But you would never see a, a cell attacking itself. And I'm going to show y'all why. Now, the reason why I don't believe in a, a, a immune system is because the more and more I get into the research, the more and more I'm into the medical field, the more and more I'm in laboratories, and the more and more we are studying these things under thermal microscope, under uh, uh, not only thermal microscopes, but electronic uh, microscopes, not only that, but and using quartz glass, using the dark field method where you're really using a different type of light code frequency for you can really see inside these cells you will see that there is no immune system the things that they're calling the immune system is all these things that make up the lymphatic system i've been saying this for the last eight years so for instance they'll say that the t-cells are part of the immune system but when you look at the t-cells that come from the thymus gland this is a part of something called the lymphatic defense system it's part of the lymphatic, uh, lymphatic system they talk about the granulocytes these things are part of the lymphatic system they call talk about the mucosa membrane which makes up the lymphatic system the inner Interstitium fluid of the body, which make up the lymphatic system. B cells, which come from the bone marrow. These are all lymphatic associated cells that create and make up lymphatic associated tissue. So the whole point is, where did you get the word immune from? Why is these things exempt? By law, nothing is exempt if it violates the laws of nature. You can't be exempt for anything if you violate the law of, of nature. If you get in front of a gun, somebody pull the trigger, most likely you're going to get your head blown off. If you stand at the top of a building and you jump freely from the building, the law of nature says that you're going to hit the ground and you're going to die. If you eat acidic forming foods by the law of nature, breaking that law, metabolic waste and metabolic acidosis will build up in the biological system and you will have a reaction to that. Your reaction Reaction will be the lymphatic system actually dispatching your these so-called immune cells like the T like the T cells, the macrophages, like the neutrophils, like the leukocytes, and all these different other cells, which are living entities, y'all. They're teaching you that these things are cells, but these things are not cells when you really study them. They have intelligence, they move, they have a predator-like ability, they know what not to kill and what to kill, they move around things, they don't bump into each other other these things are living entities that are made and recycled from within inside the cells y'all i mean it's a whole new level when you really start looking at this stuff but notice they are very very smart and they only are activated when they need to get rid of things that need to be disposed of like acidic waste byproducts metabolic acidosis your 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 um uh your food that have been metabolized unutilized minerals unprocessed fermented sugars that's when you see them going to work or if there's any foreign and Invaders are things that's not supposed to be in the body that's inside the body. You will see them moving around intelligently, eating these things up, breaking them down even more, getting them to the lymphatic system, taking them to lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are breaking these things down more. They're going through all these lymphatic vessels, ending up at the kidneys, going through the nephrons of the kidneys, and then you urinate these things out. These are your actual micro. Your anti-micro or uh, micro anti-nutrients or your micro waste. Then you have these macro waste that's too big to be broken down. These things either get left inside of the tissues or you actually defecate these things out in the toilet when you're defecating and pooping on the toilet because they're too big to go through the urine. So the only time you're going to see these cells really activated is if they need to break down something, recycle something, get rid of something, or flat out just kill and attack something. These are very smart cells. They will never, ever, ever attack themselves, and I'm going to show you why. So I just told you why I don't believe in an immune system, because all these different things that make up a so-called immune system actually make up the lymphatic defense system. So they're trying to keep you away from the lymphatic system, because the lymphatic system is the sewage system of the body. And if you understand that the sewage system of the body was the lymphatic system and you come to the knowledge and you learn the knowledge about the lymphatic system this make you powerful and now you know how to heal yourself because all the trash has been accumulating and coagulating in your body you know now how to relieve it of the body and this get rid this get rid of your so-called disease because you're not going to have any type of detoxification symptoms from it it's, it's literally as simple so let's start off with one of these so-called immune diseases. The first one I'm going to start with is fibromyalgia. Now, when you look at fibromyalgia, let's talk about the word. This is an ancient Latin word. The word fibro means fiber tissues. This is the stringy-like tissues that help make up your muscles. All right. Now, fibro. Then you look at the word my when you talk about the allo uh, allopathic uh, Latin community. My means muscle. So we talk about fibrous muscles 
tissues. Alga means pain. So fibromyalgia just means fiber muscle tissues that's in constant pain. Now you have to ask yourself, what, what will make a tissue respond and be in pain? The only reason why the body can even sense pain is through a sensory mechanism called what? The nervous system. So that means something is burning the nerve cells or burning the tissues and then the nerve cells is sending signals to the brain because you have this brain and body association or connection and it is telling you that something is going on with the tissues because they're being burnt and it's trying to tell you to self-correct itself and do something about it. It's literally the nervous system saying, look, dude, it's acids burning the nerves and the muscle tissues. You need to change your diet. That's what the body is telling you. But you're not reading it that way because you're so full of indoctrination and you think you can go around and, and, and just break the laws of nature and think you don't have to pay the consequences from it. So what happens is once you go through this metabolic acidosis and the acids is so present in the body that it begins to burn the actual muscle cells or the fibrous muscle cells that make up the muscles, you start experiencing this pain and then the cell starts to break down and makes up this fibrous muscle tissue. The moment you do this, you're going to activate the lymphatic defense system. Guess what's going to happen? It is something called autoreactive T cells. Remember, the T cells come from the thymus cells. These are the cells that come from the thymus gland. The thymus gland is a school. It's a military school that programs the actual white blood cells on how to go and, and have combat to protect the body. So they actually get a specific role and their role is to learn the, the different ways of invaders in the body and to remember them and get better and better at fighting them when they invade the body. So if you see these acids in the body, the first thing that's going to get alerted is the lymphatic defense system. It's going to alert the thymic cells, right? Or the thymic thymus gland, T cells are going to be released from themselves and it's going to go through the body and go to those areas and start eating the acids that's causing the damage and causing the problem. Now, the problem with this is when you start releasing all of these cells, because if you look under a microscope and you look inside of a, a section, they call them sections or aggregated sections under a microscope, you will have 700 red blood cells to about 70, 20 to 70 white blood cells. So it's already not enough of them. So they're going to be in there. They're they going through all these red blood cells, trying to find acids, trying to find pleomorphic bacteria, trying to find morph bacteria strands, trying to find archaea, trying to find bifidal bacteria, lactose bilis bacteria, ascoria bacteria, different, different. Yes, all these different things. Yes, even even the, the, the micro kingdom, whether we're talking about fungus, whether we're talking about mold spores, they in the cells is only is to set look they're outnumbered 700 real blood cells to 20 to 7 of them they don't have enough time so they going through there and anything that look like is it, it can be a potential danger or threat guess what they're gonna do they're gonna eat it they are made to eat acids and to meet, eat trash and to help break down other cells that's already being decomposed so they can hurry up and recycle themselves so you got a body full of acidosis because you are not eating the right things or you're in the wrong environment or you thinking the wrong thoughts or you're in the wrong climate or your molecules of emotions or what we're going to call energy in motion your energy is off bringing all these stress cortisol uh, uh, precursors to the body and you become an extremely acidic these things go haywire so they're in the body to eat acids to eat these metabolic byproducts and every now and then guess what's going to get ate with it muscle fibers because guess where the acid is at on the muscle fibers. So if you got these muscle fiber cells that's making up your muscles and they're full of lactic acid or they're full of corrosive acid, sulfuric acid, carbonic acid, any type of metabolic acid, right? They're, they're eating these acids off the cells. Why won't you think that the actual cells won't be attacked either? They guilty by association. That don't mean that the actual T cells, the thymic cells are there to just attack the tissue. No, they're attacking the acids that's on the tissue. So we just blame them and call them the, 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 the criminals. But we don't even know the functionality of what they're doing. But when you really look at what they're doing under these microscopes and dark field in the dark field method, they're only eating the acids. The only reason why the cells are getting aided or the tissues are getting aided because the acids is on the cells. And the only reason why the acids is on the cells is because you're in a actual acidic environment and you're eating metabolic waste products that's going to bring a bad byproduct to the body that can potentially change your blood pH. And if your blood pH change, you die. 
So you have this so-called immunological system or what I'm going to rightfully call the lymphatic defense system to be there as my ot, to be the balance and to help fight the battle to keep your blood pH up. The whole body is there is to protect the blood. And the reason why everything in your body protect the blood, have you ever asked yourself, why is the blood the deepest part of the body? Why is it why is it inside of the bone marrow? Then inside the bone marrow, you have the skeleton structure. Then on top of the skeleton structure, you have the actual uh, uh, tissues. Then on top of the tissues, you have the nervous system. Then on top of the nervous system, you have the skin. Then on top of the skin, you have all these layers of bacteria. Then on all these layers of bacteria, you have super micro molecules. And on these super micro molecules, you have e electrical mag magnetism. Then on top of that, you have another barrier that protects you from the outside environment. Notice all these different layers are protecting the blood. Why is it protecting the blood? Because life is in the blood. Because without the blood, you get no oxygen. Without the blood, you get no macro nutrients. Without the blood, you get no phytonutrients. Without the blood, you get no micronutrients. You don't get any of your antioxidants. You don't get any of your any of your 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 nutrients that you need like sugars, glucose, fructose, galactose. You don't get any of your gases like oxygen for exchange for carbon dioxide to feed the cells. You don't get electrical impulses. You don't get magnetism. You don't get your, your, what you would call simple proteins or what we're going to call, uh, 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 not only macrophages and, and, and minophi, uh, your, your minophages, your macrophages, your, the things that builds up your so-called immune system. Everything that's in your blood is to feed the cells of the body. The moment that your cells become starving, they go through a process where they self-degregate. This self-degregation brings on a lot of byproducts, y'all. That's the reason why when you fast and you start losing weight and the body starts to heal itself because it starts recycling all the old stuff that was dead and unutilized and you didn't want anyway and to start using these old parts to build a new car it's the whole point so we blaming something and we don't even know what we blaming it for because every time we see something doing something we automatically call it the the culprit we all them we automatically point it and say it's a criminal and i use this analogy all the time willie d told me it was a bad analogy but it works for me right now check this out if you see me every time a bank get robbed, most likely from your indoctrination, you're going to say Yaki is the bank robber. Even if he didn't rob the bank, he has something to do with those bank robbers. You're going to automatically call me the criminal because every time you see a bank get robbed, you see Yaki. You're going to automatically say he got something to do with it. But what happened if I was the superhero and every time a bank get robbed, I just knew where to be because I'm an intelligent being and I know a crime is about to happen. So I appear and I try to stop the bank from being robbed. Instead of you looking at it in that way due to indoctrination and you want to play the blame game all the time, you automatically going to label me a criminal and I know something about the bank robbery. I had something to do with it. We do the same exact thing when it comes to the sales and particular things things that's in our body. The moment that you see a parasite, you see it eating out the cells. You're going to match. The parasite is eating and feasting on all the B12, all the B17. It's eating all the iron phosphate out of the cells. It's eating all the zinc and all the copper out of the cells. No, it's not. It's eating these things, but it's not meaning to. The parasite is actually trying to get to what it loves to eat, which is the fermenting sugars that's inside the cells being corrosive breaking down the cells which is the acids that's inside the cells that's being corrosive and breaking down the cells which is all these different things that's what the parasites love the parasites don't really like vitamin b17 and vitamin b12 and all these precious minerals they like it after it goes through its metabolic process then they become food from it so we are automatically blame the crime on the parasite when the parasite is just the effect it's not the actually cause of these things we are blaming on the mucus the mucus Mucus is the effect. The mucus come in to save the day. The mucus whole point and purpose is to protect your internal organs from outside external environmental pollutants. We, but we named it the actual killer. Mucus is not the cause of disease. Mucus is the barrier between your body being healthy and disease. Mucus is a healing mechanism. That's why whenever you see the body trying to heal, you have a mucosa response. You just never change your diet. So the overproduction of mucus keep happening. And then the same mucus that was there to save the day starts smothering the cells and suffocating the cells, depriving the cells of oxygen. You can't get proper blood flow through the cell. Now the cells go through starvation and then it goes through apoptosis and it's self -annihilation annihilate itself because it can no longer breathe and before it damaged other cells it'd rather take itself out you see that so mucus is a effect not the cause a parasite is the effect 
not the cause. A bacterial infection. You have 150 trillion cells in your body, family. Out of 150 trillion cells in your body, 100 trillion of them cells do not even belong to you. It belongs to the microbial kingdom, the kingdom or the microzama, whatever we want to call it, or anything you want to call it. You see, the, or the microbiota. That's what it belongs to. So you have 150 trillion cells and 100 trillion of those cells are not even human cells. They're actually prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. These are bacteria that makes up the human body. You see that? So if you get acidosis somewhere and you know that bacteria loves to eat acids, let's just say the, the vagina. The vagina is known to have a very, very diverse portfolio of bacteria, especially when it comes to the so-called African-American female vagina. Her portfolio, her uh, bacteria portfolio is so, so diverse, she can have anywhere, anywhere from 7 million, yes, from 7 million to 7 trillion different kinds of bacteria, pleomorphizing themselves. New bacteria strands get discovered every day in a black woman's vagina. Truth be told, that's how diverse and how much of a creator God is she is in its essence. She gets pleomorphic and making new shit out of nowhere at all times. Then she get bacteria vaginosis, and the first thing we do is blame it on the bacteria. But why is the bacteria overpopulizing uh, or overculturalizing itself in that particular area? It's because her potential hydrogen is off in her vagina. She is more acidic than usual from eating the wrong foods, from drinking the wrong substances, or having sex with the wrong type of dude that already have acidic sperm and acidic medium coming from his pre or coming from his ejaculation. He ejaculates and her get some pre coming her it automatically throw her ph off so what's gonna happen the acid get, gets presence in the body the bacteria since it's already a a, a diverse portfolio of bacteria is gonna say well shit our whole job is to eat acids anyway let me tell the homeboys to go and pleomorphize themselves from a glandular site we can team up and, 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 and look literally multiply by the trillions come to this specific area and have a acidic acid eating feast this feast will go on since all of the presence of different types of bacteria are now multiplied in their area. You're going to have a symptomology. The symptomology is going to be a discharge. Now we're talking about dead cells at that in the, in the endometrium lining of the cervix. I mean, of the, yeah, of the, uh, cervix and of the, the, the birth canal area. So it's going to have a smell that comes from it. And the color is going to change because you got dead blood cells coming out of there. You got corpus luteum coming out of there. You leaking, utilizing minerals out of there so you're going to have a discolored discharge they're going to call this an affection but really is it really affection or do you just got overpopulated yeast from unutilized broken down sugars that's going to bring on candida albicans because they love to break down sugars that's going to bring on ascaria and, uh, and, and bibifidobacteria because they love to break down other acids so you got this big old portfolio of overgrowth of bacteria and, and, and mucus and fungus in a place because it's trying to eat and feast on acids they say that's a bacteria infection no that's acidic overload in the vagina no, that's an acidic overload in the throat. You see that? No, that's an acidic overload in the fingernails. No, that's an acidic overload in the stomach. So you will blame the bacteria, but you won't blame what caused the bacteria to go there in the first place. And that is the acids. Everything I'm talking about is acidosis. You can't say autoimmune disease without mentioning metabolic acidosis because everything we're talking about here, the root cause is acidic waste. It's acidic byproducts. And I'm telling you the truth about that. So the main thing that they're going to do is all these cases at first, they're going to give you an antibiotic. And notice that's why when you give women antibiotics, you have to give them another one and another one. And then you have to give them something else for yeast infections because you didn't kill everything but the problem. You killed all the bacteria, but you ain't got rid of the acids. Instead of just telling that woman to change her diet, change your diet, and that will change your BV. Change your diet. And that will change your lupus, change your diet, and that will change your multiple sclerosis, change your diet, and that will change your fibromyalgia, change your diet, and that will change your diabetes mellitus, change your diet, and that will change your cancer. See that? We doing everything to get rid of what's to get rid of what's actually helping us, and we're not going after the root cause of these so-called metabolic diseases because these are not metabolic diseases. We're talking about metabolic acidosis. So if you look at fibromyalgia, fibro means 
fibers, fibrous. My means muscle, algae means pain. Muscle is in the fibers that make up your muscle tissue because acids is eating them and bacteria is going to go to that place because one of bacteria's main purpose is to eat acids. So instead of blaming the bacteria, which came second, it came second to do its job. Its job was to be the trash can of earth to eat the acids. Let's get rid of its food source. And guess what? Them bacteria is going to pleomorphize themselves back into the granule of themselves, uh, of the, of the cell. And it will become a granule site. And won't, and it won't be this hideous parasites that's chewing on your actual cells of your body. And guess what? When that happens and the acids is removed from the muscle tissues, you will see that the actual auto reactive thymic cells or what you will call T cells, they won't even be alerted by the thymus gland and by the nervous system to even go and start chewing on the muscle cells because they don't have anything. They don't have any acids to chew on to even chew on them mistakenly. Boom. Guess what happens? Fibromyalgia just magically disappear because you change your diet. You change the acidic medium. You change the environment that you put your body in. You see what I'm saying? It's, sim it's simply that easy. Next one is multiple sclerosis. When you get into multiple sclerosis, multiple means many. Sclerosis actually come from the Latin word uh, sclerose. Sclerose means to harden. So multiple sclerosis mean literally the many hardening of neuron cells. That's all it means. It means the many or multiple hardening of neuron cells. Now, you have to ask yourself, what will make an actual nerve cell hard? From my studies, from being in the laboratories, from being in the clinics, from being in hospitals, from going around having thousands and thousands and thousands of actual clients, from having healing testimonies, I have never seen a cell destroy itself unless I said it go through apoptosis or autophagy where it have to recycle itself. You see that? I have never seen a nervous system destroy itself. Matter of fact, the nervous system is so protected, it's protected by this fibrous tissues called myelin sheaths. Have any of y'all ever heard of the myelin sheaths? Huh? Have any of y'all ever heard of the myelin sheaths? The myelin sheaths is this fibrous tissue that cover up the neuron axis of the cells. And it covers up the actual nervous system. Uh, I like to call them vascular walls, vascular walls, because the nervous system have channels, these ion gap channels where they can receive their messages through synapses when these axes touch each other. You see that? But they're protected by myelin sheaths. Well, when the myelin sheaths are destroyed by degraded cells and, and acids, when acid sits on the nervous system, it starts breaking down these myelin sheaths. So guess what's going to get activated? The bone marrow cells. Guess what's going to get activated? The thymic gland cells. They're, they, yeah, that auto-reactive thymic reaction that I was talking about. T cells going to come. These T cells are killer cells. They don't play no games. They going to come and they going to be going through the blood system looking at what's happening with the nerves. They're going to see all of these different acids because, and, and, and I want to tell y'all, refined sugars is what damage the nerves and salt. Aldized salt. Not sea salt, not pink Himalaya salt, but aldized salt. Salt that they take and they actually aldize it themselves. That's that little salt box with that little white lady in that white uh, uh umbrella. You know what I'm talking about, Nabi? Yes, sir. Uh, what is that called? Morton's. Morton's. That I type of salt. That's re aldized salt. That's refined salt. Refined sugars, like refined sucrose that you find in your sugars. Uh, fructose that you get in your suckers, your candies, your gummy, burn, your gummy bears. This can't ferment. Because it's, it's highly, highly complex. This is what you would call a complex saccharide. We can't, a polysaccharide. We can't call it a monosaccharide because it don't have one molecule. We can't even call it a disaccharide because it don't have even two molecules. You see that? Even some of your milk is alkaline. Like for instance, raw goat milk and raw cow's milk is actually alkaline. Would I eat it? No. That belongs to a baby calf. You know what I'm saying? The only milk that I ever want is the milk from my mother's tit when I was between the ages of zero and three years old. After that, I can't even digest that milk anymore. So now I get milks from mother's tit of earth, which is the coconut. The coconut, it's shaped like a boob. 
And when you look at all the macromolecules and all the nutrients that make up coconut water, plus the high electrolyte content, it actually resembles the black mother's breast milk. Nothing on earth even come to the same composition of the black woman's colostrum or the black woman's breast milk, but coconut water. Outside of that, the next one is the primate kingdom. And they check the actual primate kingdom and they check the breast milk of a gorilla's. It come close to a black woman's breast milk. Them the only two things. A cow, a goat, none of these other things that we get from milk, even though it's alkaline, if you don't cook it, it is alkaline. Can't lie about that at all. We never lie about that, but it's not made for human consumption. You see what I'm saying? So, so when you start looking at these things and you start looking at these acidic things that we put in our body, acid starts building up. You eating candy, you eating all these refined sugars, you going and eating all of these seed oils, these processed seed oils, canola oils. You don't know what they doing in these restaurants. They say they got all these healthy foods, but you don't know the food. You don't know what they cooking it in. So you eating these things and they start breaking down the cells. Then they end up to the nervous system. The nervous system trying to communicate and get them out, but it's getting dirty with all these acids. So the acid start to chew on the nervous system it's going to alert the lymphatic defense system the t-cells and the b-cells coming they come in and eating all the acids on the nervous system and guess what they eating along with it the cells that they're connected to so guess what the allopathic community do they get their microscope they go through, do they blood analysis, whether it's a live blood analysis or a dead blood analysis, whether they doing it on a stained smear slide or whether they looking at it under electronic mat uh, microscope, a thermal microscope, a quartz microscope. You know, they do a lot of different things to look at these things. The first thing that they're going to see is the acids eating the actual cells in the nervous system. You know what they're going to say? Oh, this is an autoimmune disease because the T cells are eating or attacking the body's own nervous system. Guess what they never talk about, though? They never talk about the uric acid compounds or composite that they seen in the blood along the cells. They don't talk about how the, the lymphocytes, which is around the same side as the blood cell, is in the blood eating those, too. Eating those and then nicking and getting the, getting the actual uh, neuron cells as well. They only talk about how it was attacking the cells. Why is that? Why is that? If 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 it wasn't acids on the cells, guess what wouldn't, wouldn't be eating the cells? The T cells. Because the T cells are only there to eat what? The acids. If y'all get what I'm saying so far, type in some nines. If y'all get what I'm saying so far, type in some nines. All y'all so-called healers in there, start your own page and start healing. Everybody yeah. here trying to sell your own damn products. I ain't mentioned no herbal product yet. And y'all on here trying to sell your products in y'all weak ass CMOS. Go on y'all own pages and do that. We here to learn. We here to learn. We not how y'all in here teaching and half y'all in here don't even know what y'all talking about. Come on. Crazy, man. Start your own page, teach your own lessons, and sell your own damn herbs. I ain't even mentioned no herbs or money yet. And y'all already on here having y'all fake educations and acting like y'all know what y'all talking about. And it's obviously y'all don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Listen and learn. Talking about y'all weak ass sea moss. Tired of y'all with that. Anyways. <clears throat> so I see nines coming in. All praises to that. All right. So now we're talking about that. So if you get rid of the acids and you start healing the nervous system, guess what? The actual T cells will go back in their place. They go back roaming the cells. These lymphocytes will go back roaming the cells looking for other things to eat, y'all. Looking for other things to eat. All right. So we talked about fibromyalgia. We talked about multiple sclerosis. And you notice you see most people with multiple sclerosis, they become wheelchair bound. That's because the nerve have become eaten up so much by this corrosive acids. Notice that the nerves become eaten up so much by these corrosive acids, not by the T cells. T cells cannot eat nerves up to the point where it stops its synapses and it don't communicate with the body no more. See, with multiple sclerosis, it's so much acid that you can get legions on the brain. Legions on the brain. It causes literal craters in the brain. It looks like an upside down ringworm. And then you can look, it got ridges around them. What's causing the corrosive regions of the brain like that? These big legions in the brain. Acids. This ain't the T cells. It ain't the B cells. This is corrosive chemistry. There's only two sides of. There's only two sides of chemistry and two sides of nature. The corrosive acidic side and the alkaline base side. Them the only two sides of chemistry that you going to have in nature. So what causes a crater to burn in your neurological cells? What causes 
acids and pains inside your body. This is the acidic side of chemistry. Usually it's coming from eating acidic forming foods. And you start seeing people with multiple sclerosis wheelchair bound because their legs cannot communicate with their brain no more because those nerves that actually communicates each other and commands and talk to each other actually is actually burnt out and the myelin sheaths have been damaged. So now you can't convey electrical impulses anymore. It wasn't the T cells. It wasn't the B cells. It wasn't the immunological system. This is not an autoimmune disease. This is simple acidosis in a certain location and area of the body causing the body to disconnect from the brain. And now they don't have a certain type of communication no more. But the beautiful thing about actual neurons and nerves is these cells regenerate themselves. They regenerate themselves, but it's hard for a cell to regenerate itself under acidic mediums and acidic conditions. So if you can alkalize the area, and I even hate saying the word alkalize now because there's really no such thing as that inside the actual body because you need a balanced level of alkalinity and acids in the body. You need a balance. You will die of alkalosis and you can die of acidosis. It has to be balanced. And that's the reason why that neutral component is at a 7.0 uh, up to 7.4. Even the highest I will go is 9.4. I wouldn't go any more alkaline than that. You start going more alkaline than that, guess what? Alkalinity burns as well. You think I'm playing, just go get you a cup of bleach. Go drink you a cup of bleach and tell me if you live to tell about it. And if you do live to tell about it, you probably can't talk no more because it's so alkaline, it's hot. The extreme spectrums of the potential hydrogen scale burn the same on each side. Let me say that again. Burn the same on each side. A four on the potential hydrogen scale burns. A 1.4 burns just as well as the 4. So a 4 and a 14 feels the same on the potential hydrogen scale. Whether it's a 4 or whether you take a 14, an alkaline set of 14, it still burns. It burns. It burns, family. So the higher you go up in alkalinity or alkaloids, it burns. And the lower you go towards the hydrogen side, it burns. Because it's all talking about hydrogen. hydrogen base burns. That's why if you look at water, water is what? Slightly acidic. Because it's... Well, H2O is two hydrogens and one oxygen. Now, in its natural state, whether we talk about H2O or H3O2 or H3O, which is three liquid components that's all inside of your body. One come from a spring, one come from fruit, and one come from the actual interstitial fluid and the extracellular fluid of your body. All of these are liquid.